Good morning. It's Friday. It's about 7.30. I just picked up my Friday treat. Let's do a taste test. This one's a 10. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be a 10 because Starbucks is out of the sugar cookie cold foam, or the one that I'm at. And we know how much I've grown to love that, but it's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, good morning. It's Friday. I would like to apologize first and foremost. And I would like to thank my friend Darren Akakihara, who has a YouTube channel and an Instagram account and is very talented in all things technology. Um, he texted me yesterday to ask me if I was filming on my iPhone, like the vlogs. And I was like, on occasion, like there's some clips are that are, but most of it is filmed on my camera. Um, and, he, and I said, why? And he very kindly told me because my video quality was poor. Like it was being uploaded in like this very low quality. And I will admit someone earlier in the school year asked me, not that same question, but really asked me like, why are you, why are your videos now? And I don't even know the technical names, but like, why is your video quality poor? It's basically what this person was asking, but in a much nicer way. Sorry. Um, I have to adjust you guys. And this is a four way stop sign now. And I ignored it. <laughs> so I didn't have the time to think about it. And I didn't really think anything was different. But when Darren asked you that question, then you know something's wrong. Um, so it turns out that when I've been uploading the video footage from iMovie to my computer, there's a drop down menu where you can select like the quality of the video, the high, high definition quality. And I just wasn't paying attention to that and I wasn't selecting the proper video quality. So hopefully, you guys can forgive the poor quality that I've been providing you for the past several months. And um, that you, oh my God, that you notice a difference in quality with today's vlog and the one that I uploaded yesterday. My bad, sorry. Um, so my apologies to you all and thank you to Darren. Aside from that, it's Friday. I'm obviously very happy that it's Friday. Um, <laughs> and as far as today is concerned, I need to switch seats. The kids need to switch seats. I do that once a trimester um, because I hate switching seats. Just I hate thinking about it and getting kids reacclimated to it. So I do it once a trimester, which I actually like because it just forces the group to really become cohesive and work really well to the point where I have this group right now where I've already warned them I'm not going to move their seats like that group is going to remain the same because they work really well together and I need them to be together <laughs> like it, it just works really well they don't mind because they all like sitting together and they like where they sit but the rest of the class will move um, so I need to switch seats I don't think I'm going to start anything with Abuela and Mids to Zero because I don't love the idea of starting something on a Friday and then picking it up on a Monday when I kind of need it to be like a back-to-back -back situation for this assessment. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is maybe just give them the information and the timeline for their personal narrative if I can get that all squared away. And then in social studies they have a, excuse me, history. I need to be better. Like I don't this year I haven't been as good about delineating that I'm not teaching social studies that I'm teaching history. Um, they have a study guide for lesson nine, which is the lesson they just presented on yesterday. So that's what is on the agenda. It's nothing major. It's nothing super exciting or intense. Um, and that's it. So I'm just saying good morning apologizing for my video quality and letting you know that I will be better and why is this teacher keep parking in my parking spot but oh this is cute and this is an idea that I wanted to tell the seventh grade teacher the teacher that is parked next to me is in my parking spot and it's not mine it's just the parking spot that I'm accustomed to and apparently it's his birthday and seventh grade leadership is in charge of staff recognition 
and one of the things on my list of things I would have loved to do over the years but I just couldn't do it with just having the one leadership class is recognize staff birthdays by decorating either their window or outside their door um, but this this uh, teacher did their parking spot and I don't know that it's seventh grade leadership but somebody did it so um, I love that idea but yeah I gotta go I'll talk to you guys a little bit okay so I'm on my prep period and just so you know, I was not able to log on to my email this morning and I spent a good 20 to 25 minutes attempting to log on uh, to no avail <laughs> and just making sure this is printing in the right place. I had Taylor come over, try and log in to hers. Um, she also had an issue. Then Oops. Then she had a great idea and said, what if we log on to Chrome as a guest and then go to the district's email site and try that and see if that works? And that did work. So what we've decided is there's something wrong with my Chrome profile that is preventing me from opening email. And it only happens when I'm at school. I never have this issue when I'm at home. Um, and so now I have to wait until the tech person comes because I need that to be fixed. It is it is insane. It is driving me crazy. Um, I can't I can't live like this. And it's been happening for a long time. And the first time I reported it, like the district was like, "Well, are you typing in your password correctly?" Like just asking all the most silly, the silliest questions one could ask me. Yes, I'm typing in my password correctly. I know how to log onto my computer. I know what my password is. I'm not going crazy. So, um, there's at least progress in figuring that out. Right now I'm printing out the evaluations for my leadership students for second trimester. I'm gonna give those to them. First trimester I met with them one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not gonna do that this time around. I'm gonna give them to them. They're pretty self-explanatory, but I did let them know if they wanted to meet and get clarification on different comments that they could set an appointment and meet with me to do that. So. That's what I'm gonna do. My battery's about to die, so I'm gonna stop talking. Um, and hopefully I also get an opportunity to make a seating chart for my classes. But the email is really agitating my nerves right now. It is four o'clock, which means I've wasted about an hour, maybe and a half. My battery's gonna die. Let me change this battery. Okay, there we go. Um, it's about four o'clock and I'm just kind of at a loss as to what I want to do with my life right now. So let's talk about the day. Today I decided to take it easy. Um, I didn't have the kids do anything but their study guide for social studies, which is independent. And while they did that, I don't know if I told you I was going to do this, but I checked their AR book selection for the month. So they have to this month read an AR book. They get to pick it. I'm not super strict about the reading level, but um, there are some books that are like banned because they're books that kids actually don't read. They sign up for it because it's a common book. It's a well-known book and it's a book they sign up for because their intention is to actually not read the book and just test on it in the hopes that they know the story well enough to be able to pass the test. And that is not what I want them to do at all. So for example, the books like Holes would be an example. They're not allowed. Um, the Hunger Games. Harry Potter, um, I don't allow Diary of a Wimpy Kid um, for that reason, to hopefully discourage kids from picking books that they're just gonna test on and not read, because the goal is for them to read. Um, so while they were doing their social study study guide for the quiz they're gonna have on Monday, I called them over one person at a time to check their book. So they have to fill out a Google form at the beginning of the month indicating this is the book that they're gonna read. They have a month in which to take that test. They have a, a day they have to take it by. And then I confirm that the book they said they were gonna read is the book they tested on. And I don't normally check it, but this last time around, the books that 
eighth graders, soon to be fifth grader, or soon to be high school students are picking, they were just kind of ridiculous. And so I told them, I'm gonna check these books and I'm gonna approve them just based on me looking at them and kind of ascertaining whether or not it was too far below your reading ability based on what I know about what you can do. And um, so I was checking those. I, there was only one student that I told him to pick another book and that was really just because he had picked an extremely dense book about the Constitutional Convention. And I so opened it, I said, are you really going to read this? And he's not like a super history buff or just loves reading informational text. That's not his personality at all. So I was like, are you really gonna read this? He's like, well, I think it's interesting. And so I opened up, I said, but you're gonna wanna read this entire book with these dense pages. And when I opened it, that was actually the first time I had seen the in inside of the book, which is crazy. Like he's saying, I'm gonna read this book and hadn't even opened it to see what was in there. Um, so I said, you can pick it. I said, I wouldn't pick this book and I'm a history teacher, but if this is what you wanna read, you can just know if you keep it, this is the book I'm gonna be looking for at the end of the month. So I think he decided that he was in fact gonna change it. And I said, that's probably a good idea. Um, but yeah, I just kind of had them work on that because I'm in a place where I feel like my classroom needs to be organized a little bit more. It's, it's organized for the most part, but there's little things that have been driving me crazy that are out of the norm for me. Like things need to be filed that I just haven't filed. I have some piles in places that need to be cleaned up and, um, I just need to kind of put those things away to kind of clear my mind so that I can get through the next 12 weeks and feel less burnt out. And honestly, when things are not as organized as I want them to be, it just contributes to me feeling more burnt out because it's causing a certain amount of stress. Now these piles exist and these things exist because I have been so burnt out that I can't get it done, but I'm feeling like I have a little bit more energy now. I think now that the situ my dating situation is kind of on pause, um, either temporarily or permanently with this particular person, I just have a little bit more mental capacity to do things like that because I'm not spending it kind of mulling over what's gonna happen, what I wanna do and all of that. So I'm gonna clean things up, um, make sure I'm organized. I do have quite a pile of grading that I need to do, but I think that's gonna be a problem that I address next week. I do think I'm gonna go home and do some work because I need to plan some things out again I'm doing it by choice because I know it's gonna provide me a certain amount of peace that I need right now. Um, they relate to class today, let me write this down. This was on the 20, today is the 23rd. And um, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and yeah, I feel like there was something else I was gonna tell you, but I forgot. Oh, my whole email situation. I don't know if I started the morning saying that. I think I did. What we realized is there was something wrong with my Chrome profile. So the tech person had to come in and like completely erase my profile and reset it. Whatever he had to do was done and it seems to be working now. Time will tell when I log in on Monday, but let's keep our fingers crossed because I cannot, ooh student has to go on contract. I cannot do that anymore. <laughs> so I'm gonna clean up here. I'm gonna go home. I got, I think my clothes that I bought for retail therapy purposes have arrived. So I'll probably show that to you guys um, when I get there. But yeah, glad it's Friday. Feeling a little bit more motivated to do some things to make me feel better in my teaching life in general. So that's a positive.
I am finishing up here. What time is it? <laughs> it's almost five o'clock. So it took me about 50 minutes to complete what I wanted to complete, which is really just some of that time was wasted. I was adding assignments into Aries, which is the grading program that we use. Not adding the grades, but just the assignments so that I wouldn't forget the grades that I needed to enter because sometimes assignments are going left and right and if I don't enter them into Aries, I'll forget what needs to be graded. And um, it's a new trimester, so I was doing all of that and then I remembered the way Aries works is you have to link your grade books, meaning I have to link the grade books for my homeroom class with my switch class because if I don't, then I'll have to double create every assignment. I'll have to create the assignment for homeroom and then switch. But if I link the grade books, once I create it in one class, it automatically transfers to switch. And I had, had not been doing that for all the years that I've taught middle school because it's not anything I ever had to do in elementary school because you only have one class. And this last trimester, I don't know how I realized I wasn't doing it or what but i know i had to talk to taylor taylor's been doing it so she had to show me how to do it i'd never done it before and then as i had finished creating all the assignments just now i thought wait a minute i think i have to link my grade books every single trimester and mind you we get an email from the district tech person that tells you to link the grade books and i've been getting that email for years and i just ignore it thinking that my grade books are linked i click a i i click the buttons i add the assignments and um if I say push it to another grade book, it will push it. But when you link them, you don't have to click that little box every time you create an assignment. It's just an automatic process, if that makes sense. So when I would see those emails, I thought my grade books were linked, um, but they weren't. Like I was doing more work than I needed to. So I'm like, I didn't link my grade books, but I added all these assignments. <laughs> Luckily I hadn't entered any grades. So I just printed out the assignments I added so I can re-add them later. And then I had to go back to link my grade books so that when I put them back in now, they'll already pre-populate in both classes, if that makes sense. <laughs> but so it took me longer than what I wanted. And then I also cleaned and organized. One of the things I organized was this little shelving unit. Um, because all these papers were kind of on the floor. These are things that I need to grade. So as you can see, it's kind of a stack. These are two sets of things I need to grade that I'm dreading. Um, this just needs to be entered into areas because they're already graded. So I was doing that and just throwing away any old papers I no longer needed because I've just been feeling like there's stuff in here that I just need to get rid of. So I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm gonna go home now, walk the dog, I'll show you my new clothes and then I'll end the vlog when I get there. But um, I'm feeling a little bit lighter now that I've organized some of that stuff. Okay, I'm home now. Um, I've been, I mean, I've been home for a while. I came home. I walked Woofy. Sorry, you're in the dark right now. And then I came home, got my packages and unpacked them. And that's what I'm getting ready to show you. So I got a package from Ann Taylor Loft. This is my retail therapy package that I believe I told you guys about. Um, I think I can tell you guys there. But I told you guys about, um, and if not, and to refresh your memory, I indulged in some retail therapy. I wanna say it was last weekend. I was feeling very emotional. I was feeling very overwhelmed, overworked, sad, unappreciated, single, all of those things. And so I thought, you know what? One of the things that makes me feel better about myself and my life is just nice clothes and feeling like I look put together and I haven't really bought myself clothes in a while. So of course I just take a gander on the Ann Taylor Loft website, um, which I do frequently just to see if they have any sales. And sure enough, they were having a 40% off sale. So I did indulge quite a bit. So I'm gonna show you what I bought and it's quite a few things, but retail therapy for me is real and everything was on sale. I haven't tried any of this stuff on. I'll do that probably tomorrow when my face is washed and I don't have makeup on. I don't really like to try on clothes with makeup on because I don't want to get makeup on it. And um, I'm going to do the best that I can. They're all on hangers for right now. And I'm just going to show you what I got. Okay. So 
the first thing I got is this green shirt. I am constantly looking for green things to wear because on Wednesdays I have to wear green at school because we have a house system. My house wears green and it's very hard to find green clothing. Um, and I don't want to wear the t-shirt that I have every single week. That just got old really quick. So I saw this green shirt. It's very nice. It's work appropriate, soft. Um, so that's the first thing. Second, I wanted to get some new pants and I do need some new pants. Most of my pants are all, most of them are for Antiler Loft. There's a couple pair from Old Navy and Target, but they're all pretty straight legged. And I want some more flared out pants because sometimes I don't want to see my legs in straight legs because I'm convinced I have cankles. And I haven't, I don't have a pair of pants in this color. So this is kind of like a sand color. These are called the Sutton Flare Pants. Um, so this will have a more flared look and I'm hoping that they fit because the more pants I have, the more options I feel like I have and I don't have any in this color, like I said. So that's the second thing. Next, I got this pink button up shirt because I thought it was cute. <laughs> I don't have a lot of button ups and I think shirts like this always look cute with jeans um, and dress shirts as well. So I feel like it could be a casual outfit that I make with this if I put jeans on and some tennis shoes but it can also be dressy as well next um, is another green item it is a dress uh, my only wondering about this is hopefully it's long enough on the model it looked a little bit short but then I bought dresses where I thought they would be too short and they were fine like as long as it hits my knee that I'm good but I, I bought this because it has green in it. So this just gives me another option. Hopefully, you know, it fits well and I actually have it as an option. So there was that. Then again, more green. I bought some green cargo pants. Um, I don't know if these have a specific name. The tag doesn't really. I think they were just olive colored cargo pants. Again, hopefully these fit. I'm usually, I usually have pretty good luck with Antier Loft and their pants, but recently I feel like that's changed. It depends on the cut of the pants. Whereas before, I pretty much felt like any type of pants I bought what were gonna fit correctly. Then I bought this sweater, and I think the pants came from the sweater. Like I saw the sweater, I think, and I liked it. And then it was styled with the green cargo pants and tennis shoes and I thought that was cute. So then I just replicated the the uh, outfit. I don't know if I'll actually end up wearing those two things together because a lot of things, things look really cute or a lot of times things will look cute on a model and then you try it on and you're like, I can't quite pull that off. But um, that's how the last two pieces came to be. And I think this came first. I think I saw the sweater first and then the pants. Next is this shirt um it has green in it but that's not really why i bought it i think i saw it with the sand colored pants that i just showed you thought it was cute nice and springy <laughs> this shirt is striped over the years i've realized i just tend to like things that are striped um it Kind of has like a wide fit my only wondering is is this going to make me look wider than what i want to look uh but what we're going to see i thought it was cute with the little buttons up here on the shoulder it looks comfortable i always get a medium in their tops and that works well for me so fingers crossed with that one this is the next shirt i liked it because it has this tie I don't know if you can tell, but it has like a little tie feature. My only bone to pick with Ann Taylor Loft is they're really into putting buttons on the back of shirts. And when you live alone, it's very hard to button the back of your shirt. I usually end up going unbuttoned and ask Taylor to button it up when I get there. Um, I don't know why we have to do that. <laughs> but I wish we wouldn't. But And sometimes I won't buy a shirt just because it has a button in the back but I really like this one. This one also will go with those pants, those sand colored pants, and it can go with um, probably blue pants because uh, the base of this shirt is navy blue, but I also think you could wear it with uh, black pants and you would be fine. And last, well not kind of lastly, 
I bought this jacket. I just thought this was cute. It's like a little tweed bomber jacket. Um, now, when I just tried this on, I thought you kind of have something similar to this. It's just not cut like a bomber jacket, but I have a jacket that is similar in pattern that I bought in Spain last, not this past December, but the December before last from a thrift shop, the thrift shop that my cell phone was still on end. <laughs> So I did feel a little bit guilty thinking like you kind of have something in this style and then I let go of that guilt when I said, but it's not a bomber jacket. So that's how I justified that. And again, it was 40% off. And sometimes in California, you need like a jacket, but not a heavy jacket. And I thought this would be perfect for those, for those days. Um, that's the last thing to show you for now. I do have one more dress that's green that came in a separate package that was supposed to get here on... Tuesday and it didn't and it just keeps saying that it's on the way and it's very close by it's in a facility that's very close so um, I'm assuming that's going to come within the next day or so and then the other thing that I got was um, this keyboard I think I mentioned it in a blog a couple of days ago um, because I wanted to have an extra outlet to plug in my coffee warmer turns out like my keyboard was never plugged into anything anyway so buying these keep this keyboard was kind of unnecessary but then I got attached to the keyboard so I asked the RSP teacher that works with me I asked him can you go see if you can find a power strip somewhere on campus and do that and he did so my coffee warmer is officially plugged up and back in business I don't need to have this wireless keyboard but I saw it and I thought it was cute and now I feel like I need to have it in my life so that arrived today it is this rainbow keyboard. I'm sure you've seen something similar to this before with the little buttons and it also comes with a wireless mouse. So I'm looking forward to putting that on my desk and making my desk a little bit cuter on Monday. And um, the only downfall is that you have to put batteries in the keyboard and the mouse, which is not that big of a deal, but I just love when things don't need batteries. So I just put some batteries in my Target cart because I will probably be going to Target for my weekend pickup like I always do and yeah um that's really it so I'm gonna close the vlog here so I can edit it and um I don't know I'm not sure if I'll vlog tomorrow I just it just depends on how I feel I know that I plan on doing some work stuff this weekend like I said um it's really I know some people are like you're working on the weekend and I'm very much like anti-work on the weekend unless you want to like my motto is or my philosophy is don't work on the weekend unless you want to or unless you feel like it's going to give you some sense of relief or some sense of enjoyment or some sense of satisfaction like only do it if you want to but don't do it because you feel like you have to and right now I'm in a place I'm doing it because I want to because like I said earlier I just want to clear my mind like I know it's weird to say and I hate saying it out loud because it sounds kind of pathetic. Um, I'm not saying that my dating situation was consuming my mental space, but at the same time, it was kind of distracting me from things that I would normally do in my work life that always made me feel like I was on top of things, that I was ahead of the game, and I like that feeling. Um, and so I want to get back there, and I think getting back there will alleviate some of the burnout because I think some of the burnout is just the mental burnout of feeling like you should be a little bit more on top of things than you are and that's all self-imposed none of that is coming from outside forces or the district or principals or anything like that that's just my expectation of myself and I don't I don't dislike it. I, I, I like the feeling of feeling like I'm organized and I'm on top of things and things are running smooth and everything's in its place. So this is all being done for me. So, but at the same time, if I think, oh, I thought I was going to work this weekend and it turns out I don't want to, I also reserve the right not to. <laughs> so that's it. If you enjoyed today's vlog, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please uh, consider doing so. If you are subscribed, make sure you turn on the notification bell because I'm not as consistent as I once thought I would be. And if you'd like to leave a comment, I would love it if you did. If nothing else, if you can recognize the di difference in video quality of this vlog, give it a thumbs up. All of those things help me and support my channel. And I am very close. I mean, it's been a long time coming. Those of you that have been here, no, um, but I'm almost at 20,000 subscribers, which 
I think it's pretty cool. It's a my, milestone in and of itself. So if you'd like to um, help me get there, subscribing, liking, commenting, all of those things help in that regard. So as always, I hope that you're well. And if you're not well, please be well. And I will see you guys in the next vlog. Until then. Bye.